Let's talk about core control. Oh, that famous word, the core. In the fitness and performance industry, it's a catch-all for a lot of different things. When we think about core, majority of us think about the abdominals right here. The other side of the core is usually the glutes, all right, and the big round butt muscle. But there are more sections of the core that often get overlooked or mistrained. And we're gonna talk about the lateral component, the side of the core. And with specific focus, we're gonna talk about the glute medius, the muscle on the side of the butt, never heard of it, and the quadratus lumborum in the, in the lateral stabilizers of the spine. Now, many of you are like, what is he saying? Don't worry. I wanna talk about those two regions because when used properly, they can help you prevent pain in your golf swing, be more repeatable in your golf swing, and hit the golf ball farther. So let's get into the topics a little deeper. So as we talked about, there's two muscle groups or regions that are going to make up the lateral or the side portion of the core. The first one is gonna be the glute medius, the muscle on the side of the butt. This muscle is responsible in part for abduction of the leg, which is raising the leg up and down, all right, up and down. This is a very important move in golf, which helps us prevent excessive lateral motions. And it also helps produce better coiling in the backswing, better uh, release of power into the downswing. So this is very good for producing power, for maintaining our golf posture, as well as protecting the lower back. So the, the movement of hip abduction using that glute medius is very simple. Kaylee's gonna bend her bottom leg to 90 degrees and from her shoulder to her hip to her ankles in one straight line. And from here, she's just gonna simply raise her leg up and down six inches. All right, while doing this, what we're looking for is nothing to be used right here in the side of her belly or on the outside of her leg. The majority of the motion is being accomplished by this muscle right on the side of her hip called her glute medius. Majority of our golfers that come to see us are using compensation strategies other than the muscle that we're looking for. If we can isolate it into the right zone, you're going to get better carryover into your lessons and on the course. Very good, Kaylee. The second drill we're gonna talk about is for the lateral stabilizers of the spine. Very tiny muscles inside the spine, in between each segment called the QLs. You're not gonna be tested on that. Those are spinal stabilizers, yet we never train them to stabilize. All right, so Kaylee, let's put our feet straight. I'm gonna show you a side plank, all right? This is what, how we test for that. So on Kaylee's elbow, she is going to raise her entire body up in a straight line so that her elbow is directly below her shoulder. Her shoulders are in line right here. And what she's using is those side core muscles to stabilize. When those are weak, show us a little bit of what we see. Oh, what happened? Your pelvis just sank to the floor. Or we start to see the pelvis rotate. Or we start, start to see the torso rotate. Take a break. All in all, those are compensations, all right? I would like you to be able to show me about 10 leg raises that you can say all 10 occurred from right here. And then on the side plank, I'd like to see you be able to hold a 30 second side plank without compensations, all right? If you can't start there, do not fret. We will get there. You always start where you start. That's the start of your journey. All right, so we're going to train those two muscle regions, the side of the belly, as well as the side of the butt. And by doing so, you're going to add a whole new dimension to your core. Let's start with side pillar strength. Medical research shows that if you're going to do one exercise for your core, it's a side plank. It has the most carryover to preventing low back pain. Remember, that's from the medical side of things. And I find that to be very interesting because when you go into gyms, everybody's training the front side of the core and the back, they're never training the side. So let's start with the basic common, the lowest denominator of a side plank that we can do. So what Kaylee's gonna do is get in this sideline position on her elbow, and in this version, she's gonna keep her knees on the table at all times. All right, so from knee to ankle is not elevated off the table, so she only effectively has to lift up this much of her body weight. So it decreases the amount of weight that we're using. You'll notice from her center of her spine to the center of her knees is one straight 
line. And what we're trying to also make sure that her elbow is directly under her shoulder. Sometimes people get it kicked out too far. We're gonna try to hold this for upwards of 30 seconds. If you can't go 30, you start where you start and then you progressively work up. Now we will also see that golf is an asymmetrical sport, meaning we play it one hand all the time. In fact, some of us have hit millions of golf balls one direction. Thereby, you may see a side-to-side -side discrepancy. If you flipped over, you might be weaker on one side. Do not fret. We're just going to try to get them in balance with one another. So whatever side I demonstrate on, you're going to repeat on the other side. With the athletes that you've trained, what are some common pitfalls or strategies that you are using with them on this exercise? So what I see a lot of, like you said, Lance, is when people get up, they have their elbow too far underneath them or too far away from them. Or when they come up, this is too far lent forward or sometimes even too far back is okay. what I see a lot of. So those compensations will start to recruit other muscles versus the quadratus that we talked about, that side pillar strength. And the theory behind this is we're going to use the small, tiny stabilizer muscles for stabilizing versus using them for big motions such as rotation, bending, so on and so forth. Okay, let's go to the next level in the progression. If you're excellent on the knees, Kaylee, show us where we would go to make this a little bit harder. So the next thing you would do is take the top leg from being bent and just simply put it out straight. So you're now gonna raise up and you're gonna have one foot there. Perfect. So she's by adding an extension of that top leg, she's increased the weight very slightly that her core stability is having to withstand. Same rules apply, correct? Yes, sir. What would be the next level? Would be simply taking the bottom leg, bringing it out. So we're now raising up onto the elbow and the two feet. What would be a next level? Adding in rotations, we could have a band or a cable, so you're up on there. We could be adding rows, we could be adding flies, we could be adding big rotational movements. But I will say as a point here, do not overhold it. Once you, once you feel you're fatiguing, shut it down. Be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Again, when the fatigue sets in, shut it down. There are no records here. There are no medals for long. It's about what you can do and slowly progressing beyond it. So when we get into training methodologies for the glute medius, which again is the muscle on the side, the one, the one exercise that I really migrate to personally is an exercise called hip hikers. I love hip hikers because it challenges the glute in multiple different positions, and you're gonna get a good burn really quick. So what Kaylee's gonna do here is she's gonna get up. I have two two by fours, so that's about three and a half inches above the ground. You can use whatever you want, the edge of a stair, whatever you want. So the opposite leg is freely swinging. As you notice here, she's got a uh, golf club just supporting her. The exercise is very simple. She's going to allow the floating leg to raise up and down, roughly three inches up, three inches down. The entire time she's keeping her chest level, her shoulders level, and all you're seeing is that opposite side, right hip going up and down, up and down. Now many people, when they actually get into this exercise, think we're actually training the right side. Kaylee, can you point to where you're training? It's the lead leg right now. The left leg is actually doing all the work. All right, move your hand just for one second. The muscle on the side of her hip is shortening on this side, pulling it down, which raises the other side. And then when she relaxes it, it allows it to fall down. Kaylee, what are some ways that we can make this a little bit harder because it seems too easy? It's really not too easy. We can change the position of the foot. So we could turn the foot slightly inward or slightly outward. So if we're in here. I found that the inward turn of this lead foot is a very good exercise for getting the most amount of burn as well as those fibers inside the glute medius that also help rotate us. So this lateral glute stability is going to actually promote more rotation in the long run. And naturally, are we supposed to do this on both sides? Yes, sir. All right. If you don't need the golf club for support and balance, don't use it. It's always safety first in our world, and then we'll progress to something more uh, hands across the chest. And I do find having the golf club helps give you a reminder to keep your upper body up nice and tall 
as you're doing this as well. Is it, is it safe for someone to use a mirror, do this drill in a mirror to watch oh, themselves? 100%. Now, for sets and reps, it's very simple. Once this bad boy starts catching on fire, you're gonna know when to stop and it'll cool down 30 seconds to a minute later, go back and do another couple sets. Remember, you should be feeling it here, not here, and not here. This exercise is called hip hikers. So we talked about core stability or strength uh, theory here, and the whole premise was not just focusing on the front side or the back side, but the side. And because of that, what it's going to allow us in the golf swing to do is prevent excessive lateral motion. Sometimes golf professionals refer to those as sways and slides. And by doing that, you're going to able to get better backswing pivots or torques built up, which will allow you to accelerate laterally and rotary. Both of those are going to be discussed in another section, but they're vital to producing more speed. The other side benefit to the side pillar, it's the number one rated exercise for lower back pain. So if you've ever suffered lower back pain, this is a great exercise to help get your spinal stabilizers in lockstep with you and prevent that nasty injury from coming back.